This is the life that we Lying along in prison, 47 knots and sitting up here. 47 <laughs> knots? You're crazy, Martin. We fall out of the sky. All I'm saying is that the pilot sets the speed bar, and when the cockpit remembers its speed, the pilot doesn't have to calculate how fast they're going. They just with all this dead weight they're carrying. But if you just look around at the world and just, just be, then all things are wrong. If you know what it, it is to be. <sighs> Lucy, I think we should just be <laughs> up in the cockpit. Want to go check it out? Yeah, I'm right with you on that one. Come on in, pre-9-11 passengers. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Ed Hutchins doesn't think there is anything going on in your head when you're flying this thing. He says everything you need is represented out there. And all you guys are doing is transferring representations from out there to in here. I'd like to try him, uh, like to see him try to do it then. <laughs> Lucy and I, on the other hand, would much rather think in terms of how you are reacting to the situation as it unfolds. We like to emphasize people. We're people, people. <laughs> Why'd you say that's true, Lucy? I agree. We understand it's hard work to fly an airplane. You never know what's going to happen moment to moment. You can't plan for what might happen. Every situation is different. It must be very nerve-wracking. It's like I always say, the organization of situa situated action is an emergent property of moment-by-moment -moment interaction between the actors and between the actors and the environments of their actions. Would you guys all agree with that? Uh, I just fly and try to land the plane safely. Exactly! You have a goal in mind, an object, the safe arrival of all of your passengers. All this stuff, you know, um, it, all of this stuff, even your friend here, right, just helps you achieve your goal. Sure, all the instruments and readings help out. They represent things about the environment and they mediate your operations. But you have the goal. They don't have a goal. It's you who has the goal. Hang on a second here, Bonnie. <laughs> having, having a goal has very little to do with it. A statement of intent generally says very little about the action that follows. It's very easy when we start talking about goals to jump to the conclusion that we have a plan that we follow in order to reach that goal. Nothing could be farther from the truth. It's like Lennon said, life happens when you're busy making plans. Lucy, you should know better than to openly quote con communists. No, John Lennon, you know the beetle. Ugh, I wouldn't know, I hate bugs. <laughs> Speaking of bugs, I think there's something wrong with my speed bug. I'm sure we're at 47 knots, but it keeps slipping, so it looks like we're going faster than that. What's a speed bug? Oh, it's this thing right here. I can move it anywhere on the speedometer, and then I don't have to think about how fast I should be going. As long as the needle on the speedometer is between the two speed bugs, then I know my speed is just fine, around 47 knots. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You're not just following some script that tells you to keep your speed at 47 knots. If the situation calls for you to check your speed, you look at your speed bug. If not, you don't think about it. Checking that speed bug is an embodied skill that you have. Lucy, it almost sounds like you're saying that artifacts are a relevant part of our cognition. Not really. They are just part of the environment and have some particular state that depends entirely on the situation. Sure, but if we were at 37 knots and not 47 knots, the situation would be different, but the artifact would remain relatively unchanged. True. But then we're talking about the pilot's routine practices. And wouldn't those be representations? Come in. <laughs> yeah, um, it seems all the beer that was at present at hand is gone. <laughs> is there someone who is ready to hand me another one? Wow, this is a nice view. <laughs> I could look out the window for hours and just, just be. Nothing, just be. You see, because all our epistemological questions are actually just ontological ones. That's terrific, Martin. Really deep. How about you just be in your seat? I think Martin's absolutely right. It's being in the world that determines our actions, not our conscious thoughts and plans. Ah, that's exactly. When you are flying the plane for the first time, everything is new to you and you are conscious of all activities you do.
then when you are good at it, all those things disappear into the world and you just can't be there. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. It sounds to me like you're describing the way conscious thoughts and activities can turn into unconscious oper operations. That's what activity theory says. Yeah, that's it exactly. Wait a minute, I get it. So when I first checked the correct speed, 47 knots, and then set the speed bump 47 to 50, I really have to think about the speed that's present at hand. Then, when I want to reference it, I can just glance at the bug, and that bug becomes ready at hand. Um, th that way, the speed bug is a representation that mediates my knowledge of the speed in a way that makes the knowledge a body. <laughs> cockpit, cockpit. I was hoping you could settle a bet between Martin and I. What is our exact speed right now? 47 knots! 